Today we're gonna to make an Asian meatball soup. I came up with this recipe because my kids adore Thai food, and there aren't too many options as small as this town is. But what I ended up with was something that has fabulous flavor, really captures the essence of Thai, but it uses ingredients that are easy to find and that are readily accessible. So all the best criteria. If you want to, check out the website and you can get the recipe, or you can cook along with me. And I want to say thank you and a big shout out to Modern Supply for sponsoring us. If you want to check out their showrooms, they're in Knoxville and Johnson City. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start first by seasoning and flavoring our meatballs. I adore any kind of meatball. I think they're fun, the children love them, and there's only a few tricks to keep in mind, and you can actually use any kind of meat, any kind of seasonings. In this case, I'm using an entire bunch of cilantro. Now, all of this is not going to go into the meatball itself. Some's going to go into the soup pot. But this is our flavor base, so knock yourself out with it. All right, so in here with this, I'm also going to use brown sugar. Now, if you're lucky and you've got palm sugar, that's the more accurate Thai ingredient. I don't happen to have any. Plain black pepper. This, of course, Ginger, uh, I think that stuff should be like perfume. And I just peeled it, made big chunks, because I'm gonna actually process that. Now, this one is something that is absolutely essential if you're gonna be doing any Southeast Asian cuisine. This is fish sauce, and it's pretty pungent, so you wanna be very, very careful with it. It is actually made from fermented fish. In this case, it was anchovies and salts. It's a cousin to Worcestershire, and it's an unmistakable flavor, you can't do without it. Garlic, lots of garlic. Now, normally when you're cooking um, Asian foods, you don't use much salt at all. You use uh, soy sauce. Because that is so salty, that takes the place. In this case, because I'm mimicking a Thai dish, there's not as much soy sauce used, a little more fish sauce. So, salt and pepper. Now, the lid goes on here, you crunch all that up, drizzle in your sesame oil, and you're almost making uh, a pesto, but instead of basil and pine nuts, you're using cilantro and garlic. Fabulous stuff. All right, so once you're at that step, I'm not gonna make the noise for you. You know what I did. This is what you end up with, this pretty deep green, luscious looking stuff. That is the pesto. It's a Thai pesto. All right, in this bowl, what I have is a pound each of ground pork and ground turkey. Now. Sometimes I've noticed that if you go to the grocery store, ground pork and ground turkey both can be extremely expensive. Do this. Check out right next to where it says all, you know, 90, I think 98% uh, fat free. This is 93. Huge difference in price and you only have a tiny little hint more, you know, just a little bit more um, of fat. You want some fat in here anyway because that's what binds everything together. That and this, cornstarch. This is another very common ingredient for Asian cuisine. And in here, I've got about, I don't know, three tablespoons, and this is all that has to go into this meatball. Now, any time you're making meatballs of any kind whatsoever, you're gonna have a couple of things to keep in mind. You're gonna have seasonings, salt and pepper, and believe me, people do not season them, and there's, you know, once they're made, you can't go back in and fix it. So get aggressive with it from the beginning. Another thing you're going to have is a binder of some kind. Now, a lot of times you'll see um, breadcrumbs. Um, I've seen Parmesan cheese. I've seen, um, well, in this case, I'm using cornstarch. You could also throw a little bit of flour in there if you want to. All of those work. When you've done your meatball, you want it to be tender, but you also want it to hold together. So if you don't give it something to hang on to, it's not going to do that. Okay, so at this point, yes, you do need to use your hands. Um, you're gonna make sure that everything is very well blended. Now, one more trick about a meatball. If you've ever gotten the ones that are like little hockey pucks, this is how you don't have one. When you make your meatballs, and I like to use one of these things, it's like a little baby ice cream scoop. Couple of reasons. Your meatballs are all gonna be the same size and they're all going to cook at the same rate. But once you've scooped them out, be very nice to them. All right? You don't want to go squishing them to death. That's what's going to give you a hockey puck. If you handle the meat as little as possible, that's where that wonderful, tender mm comes from when you cook it off. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to make all my meatballs. Back here in my pot, I've got two quarts of plain chicken broth. Haven't seasoned it at all yet because we're going to come to that in a minute. Now, over here, I have a whole bunch of mushrooms, about four ounces. And this is a mixed group. It was sold as a gourmet blend, but it's oysters, shiitakes. There's some button mushrooms in there. And this right here is just bok choy. I take about three ribs and slice these up about that big. Now those just dump in. And I took the, to uh, the tops of the bok choy and I've got that reserved. We're gonna throw that in at the last because it only takes a minute to cook. We don't wanna overcook it. Now this is how easy this is. All of these meatballs are gonna throw in here and this only takes about 10 minutes. Now, the one thing you wanna be careful with, don't overcook the meatballs. They will get tough. But this takes 10 minutes and in that long, we'll be done. We are at a full boil and our meatballs have had right about eight minutes. Perfect timing, because what we're gonna add next, this is a Chinese noodle. Look, it's cute, it matches my hair. <laughs> it's not as frizzy. All right, this into the pot. And I like to go ahead and cook these off ahead of time. And then you rinse them with a little cold water and a little drizzle, drizzle of oil and that keeps them from you know, turning into one big lump while you're waiting. Don't use a rice noodle though, because the rice noodles, when this sits, will continue to uh, absorb the liquid and release starch and it'll get cloudy and it'll turn into one big, you know, mess. Don't do that. This is the other half of our paste. This is what seasons our broth. All the garlic and cilantro, that little touch of brown sugar. And the last thing we're gonna do, this is an entire bunch of um, scallions, green onions, spring onions, they're wonderful. They're really pretty much a requirement for Asian cooking. And then this, this is the leafy tops from the bok choy. I just sliced them into little ribbons. And this is just about done. So we get, of course, I had to lose some over the side because that's just kind of how I do things. <laughs> All right, so everybody is into this pool and we're turning the heat down. I love, love the colors in this. I love the green and the white. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. I start the big bunch of noodles. Ah. <laughs> now I have a never ending noodle bowl. Check that out. There's the Asian meatballs. And as a last touch, yes, I've heard uh, called a Thai ketchup sriracha. Very hot, very spicy, but very pretty. I put a little on top and the rest around the edge so that however much you want. Now, feel free to check out the website and this recipe for Asian style meatballs will be right there for you.